One of the big challenges of modern life is that we simply have too much choice. Hi guys, I'm Martin Cliff. Greetings from Bucharest. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Um, before we get any further, make sure you click that thumbs up down below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Um, we really love to have you on board um, and comment in the comments below if this uh, you know, provokes any thoughts for you. Uh, but let's, let's get on with this. As, as this video is bringing us into December, um, it's sort of a time of year when a lot of us start to think about what we want for Christmas, what other people want for Christmas. Um, all these sorts of things that are often quite consumer focused. Um, and this isn't a anti-consumerist rant from a minimalist perspective in that kind of way. I don't intend it to be. Uh, but it's just something that, that has occurred to me over the last few weeks and months. Um, that choice, which we often think of as a good thing, actually just makes life more difficult for us all. Um, how many of you load your iTunes or whatever it is and have several lots of albums that you've not listened to for years or maybe in your CD collection or vinyl collection or whatever it is. Um, if, you, if you're a streamer, you have an almost unlimited selection of stuff. You would never listen to it all. Um, but again, I'm not so sure about how much value that really puts on music. Um, but let's take a very specific example. If you are going to a hardware store to buy a hammer and there is a choice of two, there is an affordable one, there is a more expensive one. Odds are that would depend, which hammer you buy would depend on the type of person you are and the type of work you're going to do. So if you are a hobbyist who just wants to put up a couple of pictures, you'll buy the cheaper hammer. But if you are a professional carpenter who is going to be using this thing every day, day in, day out, you will pay the four, five, six times as much maybe sometimes for the more professional, more well-made hammer because it's going to last longer. It might be more ergonomic. Um, and that's an you know, easy choice to make, but you can apply that to so many different things. But if you walk into a hardware store these days, Odds are you're going to be faced with 20, 30 different types of hammer, different different brands. Even if you go in and you know that you want a two pound ball peen hammer, I think that's a thing. Um, I have two hammers. Um, one is a claw hammer, one is a ball peen, and I can't remember the weights, but they are sort of generally measured by weight. Um, yeah, you might still be faced with 20, 30 from different brands and different colors and different materials and different this and that and the other. And you walk in and you're just completely confused. It's like, how do I know which hammer to buy? This was brought home to me uh, yesterday or the day before, I think, when I was thinking about watches. Now I have six watches, which is a moderate watch collection. Um, I know people who have four times that and I know people who only have one or two um, but the decision of what watch to wear can often be one that that we have to think about except at the moment I've realized that four of my watches have flat batteries so I have a choice of two I can wear the one with the gold face and the gold strap or I can wear the one with the blue face and the silver strap they're actually the same watch, these two. They're um, Rotary Havana watches. I really like these watches. Um, does that mean I will be getting rid of my other four watches before or after I replace the battery? No, because sometimes you need a different type of watch. Sometimes you want a leather strap because the metal strap, particularly if you've got hairy arms, can pinch sometimes. Um, or if it's warm, it will be a bit more comfortable rather than making you sweat. Sometimes you want something with a larger face and more features, maybe a chronograph or whatever. Uh, sometimes you need a waterproof watch if you're going out for a hike or something and you want something a bit more rugged. So, you know, my watches are different. But, again, so many times, so much choice actually makes our life more difficult. Now let's take things back to the main focus of this channel, which is music and guitars and stuff. And I really feel for um, young musicians today, in some ways, in some ways it's the 
great time to be a musician because even as a beginner, beginner guitars are really good. Really good compared with certainly what we had in the, uh, in the 90s and I believe they were even worse beginner guitars back in the 60s and 70s. When I bought my first guitar, um, my option was an encore guitar. Uh, that was the amount of money my parents were willing to spend because they didn't know whether I would latch onto this thing and play it for 30 years. Uh, or, or I may have played it for three months and then given up and put it under the bed and forgotten about it. Uh, so I had a choice of, I could have a red one, black one, or a white one. And I went for the white one. I can't remember, I may have had the option of three single coils or HSS, but I believe the HSS one was more expensive. Nowadays, there are so many options, so many options, different colors, different woods, different manufacturers. Um, and yes, they're all a lot better than my Encore E76 made in India piece of junk was that I started on. But how do you choose? And as you've sort of developed as a musician, yeah, you know, when I was at a point of having my most guitars, which if we're just talking about electric guitars, I think it was 18 or 19, maybe even 20. Um, it became somewhat difficult to choose what to play, except it really didn't because I played one of my four sirs, or on the very rare occasion, maybe um, my, my Les Paul. But pretty much it was, if I wanted humbuckers, I'd play Blue or Mikey. And if I wanted single coils, I'd play Old Red or I'd play Storm. That was an easy choice. Too much choice would actually make things really, really difficult. Now, a lot of the time in videos, you'll notice I'm wearing a light blue denim shirt. Sometimes with a black t-shirt underneath, sometimes with a blue t-shirt underneath, sometimes with a red t-shirt underneath. It's easy for me to decide what to wear. Partly because I think these are the only two long sleeve casual shirts I've currently got in Bucharest. So I have a few different t-shirts I can wear underneath, but my choice of shirts like this are, is, is limited, kind of intentionally. It makes my life easy when I go to my wardrobe in the morning. Now that's one of the appeals of the so-called capsule wardrobe, but again, this isn't a minimalist video. Um, it's just something to think about, you know, maybe restricting your options will actually make your life a, a bit easier. I'm not saying give everything away, saying you know, sell everything um, but as we get towards the, the holiday season maybe go in initially and limit your choice so rather than saying I want to buy this person a sweater you go in and say okay I want to buy this person a blue sweater from this store or maybe the, these two stores that is making your life easier. Also, if you can get everything from one or two stores, it makes the whole shopping process much easier. And also you're not as bombarded with consumer adverts and sales tickets and all that kind of thing, um, which to me is a good thing because that's all detracting from the holiday season. Simple often can just make life easier, make decisions easier. I've talked, I think, before on this channel about decision fatigue, but yeah, um, for me, keeping my decisions as limited as possible is kind of useful. Which isn't to say that there aren't things that I still want. I'm sure we all still want things. I would like a nice rug for this room because at the moment the floor is a little bit echoey. So um, I have a microphone right above my head, but if I wanted to use a microphone a bit further away, you would pick up quite a lot of echo in this room. Also, as it gets more towards winter, I appreciate this video is appearing in, um, in December, but I'm filming it at the start of October. Uh, so at the moment, it's not yet gone cold, but the floor will get colder. So a rug would be nice. Uh, we also want a couple of cabinets for the living room to put some of the Lego in, because at the moment it's just still in boxes, despite the fact that we moved in three months ago. So this was just meant to be something to, to think about um, for a video at the start of the potentially the present buying season. 
Um, think about if you're going to buy someone a material gift, and I would always encourage people to buy consumable items or experiences. Um, some of the best received gifts that we've given to family members have been things like um, an afternoon tea in a nice hotel. Or well, my dad really likes steam trains, so a nice ride on a steam train somewhere. Um, these things you know, go down well because it's a special day that you can then remember as opposed to another portable hard drive or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I would encourage you to, to think about things like that. But at the same time, you know, if, if you do want to buy someone a sweater, decide that it's going to be blue and decide that it's going to be from Next before you go shopping and then it makes life a lot easier. Hope these thoughts help you. Uh, please do comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I will see you next time. Take care.